Okay, um, hey boys and girls, here we are again with the, um, with the Polestar 2. Um, we're going to be looking underneath and quite frankly, I saw so much stuff. Uh, we, uh, we had to do, uh, do this a little different because um, uh, I got a good memory, it's just short. Um, and I, I want to talk to you about all the things that we've seen here on the Polestar. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are uh, just different. So let's start off over here um with the um with uh, the driver's side of the car and I, i'm gonna i put these little uh, blue tapes on here because like i said it's hard to remember everything so i'm just going to take one off here that some people don't know this but we still use rivets um in car build uh, every once in a while now when you have a rivet like this obviously nobody's going to have the equipment to, at home to do that so you just drill out one side. Once you drill it out, then you can replace all these things with bolts. And that'll happen when you get your ball joints uh, uh, fixed. This is kind of an interesting um, little uh, semi-solid forging here. Um, this forging is made to, uh, to, to collapse, okay? It's made to break. And uh, the reason for that is because of the small offset or SORB um, requirements that we have here in the US. So if we look up over here, the reason that, uh, the reason that I, I'm kind of intrigued about how this thing is working is because if we look inside, we can see that this great big giant welded um, ex uh, uh, extrusion part is being uh, directed right into the uh, main longitudinal, so, or sorry, the, uh, the main carriage. Now the carriage is going to came it back and it's going to go right into the longitudinal so that carries the load in this direction. And then you can see that the uh, bumper beam swings out and I think, uh, I'm pretty sure, that right here what we're seeing is uh, this line of action right here is going to give me the 27 degrees of offset that I need in order to make, cer make certain that this wheel doesn't come in and, uh, and crush you. Volvo has always talked a lot about, um, about um, uh, crash worthiness and whatnot, so this doesn't surprise me to see this. This does though. Um, this, is a, this is a little piece of, um, a little piece of foam onto the, uh, onto the brake shield, and I think the reason for that is noise. So uh, what they've done is dampened it by finding where the noise point is, and by putting this in here, you don't get the, the little rattles and whatnot that sometimes happen when, uh, as your brake wears, or as, as your car wears. Over here, I, I, I thought that this was kind of interesting. If you remember back to the Ford Mach-E, we had a double link, right? So there was one link here and then another link here. Uh, the guys over here at, uh, at uh, Polestar have gotten rid of one of those ring links and that just contributes to, uh, to less to less weight and, um, and I don't think it's going to affect the performance of the car at all. Over here we've got the double link and this is going to be taking care of the twist, the axial movement that you've got um, with, the, uh, with the electric motor as it takes off. It wants to, you get a torque moment and this is going to take that out. Over here we've got um, a cool uh, extension of the, um, or cool use of the, uh, of the um, uh, what do you call it, extrusions here. Uh, I personally don't like extrusion a whole lot unless it's done as well as it can be done. And uh, this one is uh, pretty good, but it's still got an awful lot of, um, it's got an awful lot of machining going on here. Um, let's go over here and uh, have a look upstairs. Uh, now this has the uh, same sort of a shock arrangement or similar shock arrangement as what the Maki -E had, but this is a little different in the way they hold the um, in the way they hold the, the shock absorber, this is something that we recommended for basically cheap cars uh, for a long time. But uh, but uh, Volvo's popped it in here, so that's your shock absorber, and it's being clamped in right here with that space in between, which is going to give you the clamp force. So the front of the car looks pretty good. Uh, I'm uh, I mean this is inexpensive and it's fairly lightweight. So let's move to the center of the vehicle. So right here, I was surprised to find um, friction stern welding. 
So we're looking at, this is the battery box. The inner side of the car has got a battery box and there is a air shield that goes over the top of it. But this, this is something that um, we don't see too often. Friction stir welding or thixotropic welding is something that we used on an airplane, um, uh, airplane designs. And in essence, what it is, it's a spindle. It moves very, very quickly and it goes in that little hole right there. It pokes its way in and then it starts moving across and as it's spinning, it spins the material into a plastic state, not like plastic, uh, like plastic dishes or, uh, or something like that. Plastic as in the metallurgical term, which means that um, it, it enters a state where it's semi-solid. Um, when it's in that state, um, it doesn't have any induced um, uh, uh, tensions and uh, stresses. So by doing this, you make sure that you keep your panel straight and it doesn't cost you anything. This is not welding as uh, like what you saw in the front, arc welding. This, you spin and you move and you move and you move and you move. And what it does is it's spinning this material and that material into a common material, which makes it so that that, that, um, that joint is like, like the same piece. It's the same, uh, same piece now. Here we've got um, midsection um, uh, attachments for the battery. And we also can see here that if we look inside, you can see here that there's two layers of material, one here and one there. And both of them are quite thick. Uh, to protect the battery uh, from any sort of intrusion that might be coming from uh, uh, intrusion that might be coming from uh, the lower area. So anyway, one of the things I like is this little air shield. Um, this air shield um, is kind of cool because they're using something that we used to call Mercedes hooks. Mercedes was the first one to use it and they, they used it on door panels inside the car. But now they've, everybody's found out it's so robust that they're using it in all kinds of new spots. So Let's have a look at how this works right here um, on, this, uh, on this air shield underneath the car. So that's it, it's done. So if you were blinking, uh, you missed it, but that's, that's all it really needs. They put in a couple of chicken, uh, chicken screws or chicken fasteners of some sort, but that's a really good idea. So good on you. I already talked about that. So let's, uh, let's talk about something I don't like. I, I don't know how to show you this, but let's look, look up here, look way up here. Okay, this is the inverter. Uh, that's not the spot I would pick. That would be my last choice on the planet for uh, putting this. I've got this great big giant bracket and whatnot. And then I've got the inverter stuck there. And the reason for that is beyond me because I would take that and park it as far away from the back end of the car as I could possibly be. So, um, not so good. Then let's have a look at this, okay? Right here, we have a C, a C channel, which means that um, it's shaped like that, like a C only bent really square. So this square C right here is holding up this air shield. Um, okay, uh, uh, that's fine, but right up here, right up here, that's the tub. That's the tub that's sitting right upstairs. Why didn't I make that a little deeper and then, and then make it so that I could connect the air shield to this and get rid of that? So that's something that uh, I like to look at from uh, a design standpoint. What can we do to make it cheaper, better, uh, less weight, and more customer friendly? Now, let's go over here, okay? These, these big holes here that you see where that blue tape is, that big hole right there, that's how you, that's an alignment pin. And those alignment pins are, um, are really important if you want to have a good build in your car. And uh, they're huge. I, I'm really impressed with the size of those things. They're, they're gigantic. Let's look at um, uh, the next thing, which is uh, this electric motor. Um, and I wanted to talk about, oh yeah. So here we've got the cabling coming to the electric motor. This is kind of like where I would have liked to have seen somewhere in here the inverter. So moving it in that direction would have been a good thing. Again, these, are, um, these, uh, these shafts are in alignment um, and, uh, and they are symmetric, uh, asymmetrical in nature. Um, down here is a thing I do like uh, from a, a wind noise sting uh, a standpoint and getting rocks inside your suspension. But look at this. 
All right, boys and girls, what the heck does that do? That gets rid of, that gets rid of whistling. I'll put money on it. Um, if, you're, uh, if you're into making sure that your uh, customer is happy, you, you don't want to have wind noise. And wind noise, sometimes with these types of uh, um, safety devices or brackets or whatever, they come into a problem. And so you put little doodads on like that in order to make sure that, uh, that you, don't, you don't get wind noise. So we come over here and, um, and we look at something that I think is kind of like an opportunity for a redesign. So this right here, maybe on this side, this right here is, a, is, is called a leveling sensor, okay? This tells me, there's one in the front too, but it's too hard to see. This tells me basically when the car is jouncing around. So if we look at this, um, we can see that here's the sensor, here's one arm, which I absolutely have to have. Then it's bolted from the back to this arm, and then it goes to a bracket, and then it goes to a screw. Now up here, there's another bracket that's, that's basically holding up that leveling sensor. So I know that this is gonna sound trivial and whatnot, but do I actually need this? Mm, I don't think so. If I'm a kind of a smart engineer, I should be able to figure out how to move that so that I can take this arm and attach it directly to this, uh, this lower trailing arm. This, this is the kind of stuff that, that we really should be looking at all the time. Every engineer, one ounce, or in this case, one gram every day. That's the kind of stuff that can reduce the amount of weight and reduction of weight is kind of like one of the engineers for an EV's primary job. The other thing I do like is this right here. These are, these hollow castings, um, everybody's going to them now. I love them. I, I, I think that um, Elon Musk took this to the max, but at the end of the day, these are really a good idea that I've um, uh, been uh, basically, <clears throat> the designs have been hampered by, by people with no imagination. Luckily, most of them are my age, so they're either dead or they're retired. But anyway, all in all, uh, we're pretty happy with what we've seen here with the Polestar 2. Um, if, I hadn't have, uh, if I hadn't have seen it, I, I, I really wouldn't have believed that there were so many things here that I could have a look at with a suspension. Sorry it took so long, but you know what? I think it's worth it. I think that, um, I think that uh, guys over at, uh, at uh, Geely should be very proud, uh, Volvo and Geely should be very proud of the Polestar. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, keep tipping those cashiers, and we will be back with more on the Polestar 2 very shortly. Bye-bye.